Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here. and This is the Acer C7 Chromebook running full-on Windows 7, booting up natively right now as we speak. And this is not virtualized, running inside of Linux or anything like that. And so uh, what you're about to watch me do is just an experiment. This isn't a definitive tutorial guide or how to uh, to install Windows on here. I will be providing links to all the information of where I got the steps to uh, accomplish this goal and what we're primarily doing right now is uh, pretty technical. It does involve you uh, getting into your machine and opening it up as well as uh, flashing a, a very customized ROM BIOS uh, called Coreboot uh, which I've downloaded from a very helpful, very useful site which I do recommend you please donate some money to this site because uh, the person who made this uh, customized ROM really went out of their way and it makes your, the job a whole lot easier. But uh, full disclosure though, not quite everything is working on here. For example, the keyboard and the trackpad. I had to plug in a, a external uh, USB keyboard and mouse uh, just to get things going. There's probably fixes and I'm still trying to work out or figure out some of the fixes for that. You have to be fully prepared to brick and mess up your Chromebook to where you are not able to use it anymore, right? That's why uh, you should really uh, fully understand and read all the information that I will provide in the links in the description. If you use your Chromebook for any type of productivity work or you got to get some important things done with it and you don't want to lose the use of your Chromebook, this is not for you. Even though you watch everything step by step and follow everything to the letter, there's still a lot of potential uh, for things to go wrong and for you to brick your Chromebook, all right? So with that said, let's get into uh, putting this thing into developer mode. So the first thing we're going to do is put the Chromebook into developer mode. And if you've already done that, you can skip this step, but essentially uh, you got to turn off the machine. And so once it's completely powered off, we're going to then press the escape and F3 key and then press the power button and continue holding the escape and F3 key and once you're presented with this screen here you're going to press control D uh, once you get to the screen here press enter all right, so now that we're in developer mode, I'm going to go ahead and shut everything down. And what we're going to do now is disable the right protect jumper. So we have here the bottom of the Chromebook and uh, you probably have the sticker, this warranty sticker right around here. I've taken mine off and set it to the side there. And so we're going to unscrew. Then you're going to slide this out. So you apply some pressure and slide it out right and normally oh first we're going to remove the battery and so normally you would have a black plastic or sticker tab looking thing covering this area here you can remove it uh, or temporarily remove it or lift it up or whatever uh, it doesn't matter if it's there or not uh, I've taken mine off already obviously and this is the jumper right here that we have to make a connection to and if you have a small little jumper that can fit in there great I don't and so instead I will be using a tiny little piece of aluminum foil here I'm just gonna jam into there and I'm also gonna use this uh, very sophisticated piece of toolery here uh, that is known as the push pin and so I know you can't really see what it is that I'm doing but I'm basically just jamming it in there and uh, you have to be very very careful with uh, what you're doing here because you do not want to break those pins it's very important that you don't break the pins but it's also very important that you make a good connection right if you don't make a good connection here uh, things aren't gonna work and uh, you could potentially ruin and break brick your whole Chromebook here and so now that I think that it's uh, in there pretty good I'm just gonna leave it at that right we're gonna put the cover back on I'm not gonna screw it back on instead I'm um, because I'll be going back in there right and so that's disabling the chip 
Okay, so I've got my system booted up here with the jumper enabled and the uh, right protect BIOS has been uh, disabled. We're going to go into the developer shell and uh, by the way I have the power plugged in. It's very important that you have power plugged in at all times. And you're going to hit control alt T to bring up the developer shell. Right? And then you type in shell. Then you're going to type in sudo space dash s. And then we're going to uh, just type in flash rom space dash p space internal colon bus equals spi space dash dash wp dash status. And we're going to check the status and we're going to make sure that uh, everything here is the same, right? And uh, for whatever reason, if right protect was enabled, you can uh, bring up the same command here and you can type in disable, right? And then uh, we're also going to bring up the same command here and type in range zero space zero, right? Don't ask me why I've typed in those commands, but uh, I'm just following some instructions that I read online. It doesn't seem to hurt anything. And so I've got, gone ahead and typed that in regardless. So then uh, next we're going to go ahead and uh, back up our original ROM file here. So I'll just go ahead and press exit, right? And then we're going to go to cd space forward slash home forward slash chronos forward slash user forward slash downloads with the capital D right and we're in the downloads folder now and then we're gonna type in sudo flash rom space dash r for reading space og bios dot bin and you can name it whatever you want I'm just gonna call it og bios right and then I'm gonna press enter and so it's going to read and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in my thumb drive here. It should pop up my thumb drive. And uh, pay no attention to this. Let me just delete this. Right, so if you look at your downloads folder, uh, you're going to see the OG BIOS.bin file that we just created. And I'm going to click and drag it onto the uh, thumb drive here so now it's on the thumb drive and you can throw it in your Google Drive too if you want store it in the cloud it doesn't hurt to have it in two places it's actually a really good idea because uh, something could happen to your thumb drive or the file just the fact of copying it to your thumb drive could mess things up a little All right so uh, now that I got that I'm gonna go ahead and eject this and then I'm going to take out and store the thumb drive somewhere safe Right, and then uh, we can go ahead and close this now. And we're gonna go to a, a website here, very useful, very uh, informative website. It's johnlewis.ie, and it's the pre-built core boot firmware for Chromebooks uh, post that he has here. And it's very important that you read all of this information, right? Um, do read all of this first before attempting any of this stuff and uh, take the time to donate uh, some money if you can I've donated some money uh, he basically uh, needs money to purchase other Chromebooks so he can make builds for uh, other devices right and so I plan on donating again especially because he's helped me out a lot uh, with uh, learning how to type in these commands here all right and so if you scroll down to the bottom he has builds for the Samsung series 5 and then now we're at the Acer C7 Chromebook. And down at the bottom here, I'm going to download the latest uh, ROM file. And it's about an 8 megabyte file, so I'm gonna, it's going to take a couple of minutes. And we're going to go to our downloads folder here. And once this is done, we're going to rename this file. Okay, so we've got our file downloaded here, and uh, I'm going to rename this to c7.rom just to make things easier uh, when you type in the command uh, as we're about to do now so it's in the downloads folder it's called c7.rom we're going to go back to our um, 
uh, shell here and then you're gonna type in, now you're gonna type in sudo space flash rom space dash w space c7 dot rom all right so we're in the downloads folder because that's where our c7 dot rom file is and so this is the uh, point of no return speak now forever hold your peace basically you're going to make it or break it it's very important that you do have the um chip enabled right to flash this and so press enter All right, so you might get this, and it's very scary, where it says, uh, verified failed, yada yada, all this info, do not reboot or power off, it says failed. It all seems very scary, yes, I know. Um, when I first did this, I didn't get any errors at all. It just said success, right? Uh, the first time around when I did this. Um, but the second time around, I got this area, uh, error here, and uh, if you go back to the uh, core boot uh, site, right, uh, right up here, uh, there is it's saying that you will get an error like so, right, um, and it's very similar to what I just got. All of this information here. If the codes aren't identical, report it uh, here on this website. Um, and otherwise, reboot and you'll be okay. So for the most part, everything here, all of this info here, seems to be um, identical. Yep, right there. And so I'm going to shut this down now, and I'm going to take out the... Uh, aluminum foil that I put into there. Alright, so we just flashed the BIOS chip and so before we can fire it back up we have to uh, take out the write protect disabling mechanism, whatever it is that you chose to do. Uh, if you try starting this up you uh, won't get anything or won't allow you to actually boot up with it um, disabled there so we have to take this out of course you want to do this with the battery taken out and take all the safety precautions yada 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 all right so now we can uh, fire this back up and uh, boot into windows all right so i have here uh, my thumb drive with windows insulation uh, on it and if you want to watch a video on how to create one of these the link will be in the description i also have some drivers here loaded up uh, from another acer netbook called the 756 i believe it is all right so we're going to go ahead and plug this in now and uh, you're going to also need to plug in a keyboard and mouse because not everything is uh, working and so when you fire this up for the very first time you're going to get the option to press escape to boot menu and you're supposed to see the thumb drive here, but uh, I don't. And so I don't know why that happens, but if you control alt delete and press um, and let it reboot and press escape again, you'll see the USB thumb drive show up. So then you press two to boot the thumb drive. And so now uh, we're gonna be loading up uh, the Windows installation environment. All right, so we're at the first uh, screen here. And so what you're gonna do is go ahead and press next install now and uh, this is pretty much a standard affair those of you are probably already familiar with how to install windows you can skip this part if you want but i'm just going to go through a little bit um, or go through the process uh, so that those of you who uh, never done this before will know how to do it so uh, click on accept the terms click on next and you're going to want to do custom uh, your partition might be all kinds of craziness with different partitions and stuff like that going on, but whatever it is, you select pretty much everything and you hit delete. And uh, this pretty much goes without saying. Obviously, you should already know that whatever data that you have on your hard drive is going to be gone. All right. And so now that we've got our um, largest partition here selected, you click on next and uh, now it's going to 
uh, boot up and uh, we'll go to the uh, boot screen and start to install some drivers. Alright, so we just installed Windows and if you'll notice here, right down at the bottom, it says no battery detected even though there is a battery installed as well as I don't have the power cord plugged in yet everything is still working so that's one of the caveats of this is that ACPI uh, is not working fully functional right now so uh, things like suspend or sleep uh, does not work and resume hibernation none of that stuff works so if you like close the lid and you told to go to sleep it won't wake up or it'll try to resume but things go all crazy and it doesn't work too well so uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and try to install all of the uh, drivers or as much drivers, as many drivers as I can. And so on my installation disk here, I have uh, some C10 drivers. And by the way, I will provide a link uh, to download this as a giant zip file. And so we're just going to go ahead and unpack everything onto uh, the desktop here. Alright, so I got everything unpacked here and the first thing I'm going to install is going to be the chipset. Generally, that's usually the first thing that you want to install on uh, just about any system really is the uh, chipset. Alright, so I'm pretty much going to end the video here with installing uh, some drivers and really there's only two drivers that worked out pretty well and that is the uh, Intel chipset drivers and the LAN drivers and uh, those are the two that you want to get started off with because with the LAN drivers you'll be able to connect to the internet and you'll be able to do Windows updates and it should be able to find some other drivers uh, for you uh, particularly the video drivers which work out pretty well some other things uh, don't work out too well but uh, for the most part Windows does recognize things like the webcam I don't know if those things work uh, but it does pick up the uh, webcam, Bluetooth devices, and stuff like that. But not the wireless drivers. I couldn't get the wireless card working on there, even though I downloaded uh, drivers from the Acer website pertaining to the Atheros Wi-Fi devices. And that's what's supposed to be in there, right? And so like I said, if you uh, find better drivers or drivers at work, please let me know in the comments. And I will try to find them and provide them as links. Uh, in the description as well as uh, the two drivers that I use for the LAN and um, sat or, um, chipset drivers. Uh, I'll provide that as a zip file in the link in the description. And so uh, to conclude, um, what are the benefits of this uh, running Windows on here? Well, it's kind of just like a weekend project um, to just kind of toy around with. But I would say uh, to probably stick with a Linux distro at least uh, you'll have full on native uh, Linux installed on here if you uh, decide to go that route as well as um, you'll get rid of that uh, OS verification um, with the new custom BIOS now it only takes like a couple of seconds for it to recognize which is uh, pretty convenient I would say um, and you can completely get rid of everything Chrome OS on there anyways hopefully this video was uh, somewhat informative for you uh, like I said um, it, it's just an experiment so go at it with uh, your own risk and read up as much as you possibly can let me know if your successes or any type of failures or anything like that in the description and as always thanks for watching I'll catch you guys later